So let me get the recording going. All right, there we are. We are we are underway. And as I say, other people, other classmates will be will be joining us. I'm Dr. Mike Lucas. You've seen me by video. You've read my emails. And now you've got more of a two-dimensional experience with me in that I'm actually live with you. Uh, the only better experience for us is if we were all together on one campus. And that would be a grand experience, but that's just not life these days. And uh, I am grateful for all of you being a part of our class. And as I had indicated in my email, one of the things that we want to offer as instructors to all of our students, here comes Brittany. Hello, Brittany. She's getting logged in here. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Hi, and I see you. Richard coming. Uh, Brittany and Richard, we're underway. We're recording for the benefit of those that are not able to be here for legitimate reasons. And so I keep admitting folks, here comes Demetria, uh, if I'm saying that right. Yeah. One of the things that we are going to be offering as uh, instructors online is at least one connection with us virtually. Um, this is not going to be a formal class lecture. There's nothing that you're going to need to take notes on today that's going to show up in a paper or on a quiz or anything like that. This is not an instructional section per se, session per se. We want to make sure that you have ample access to us and so that you can have any questions that you have answered, any issues that have developed so far for you in the course. Certainly, one of our goals here is to help connect one another uh, because we're all connected universally to me, but we're connected to each other as well. Some of that is in our group work that's going to come up a little later in the course, and I'll, I'll address some of that with you in just a bit. So that's what today is about for all of us. So let's take a moment right now have a brief prayer together, and I'll get us launched, okay? Let's pray. Holy Father, we're grateful for the time that we have virtually. We're coming in from all around the country, and it's such a great testimony to this platform of online learning, distance learning that we have through Regent. We're grateful for this opportunity to study, and for this particular course, Father, not only is it a requirement for our undergraduate degrees here in the College of Arts and Sciences? But Father, we're grateful that this course gives us an opportunity from a more formal academic perspective to pull together and tie together themes and, and topics and issues concerning our own identity in relation to you, your identity, your nature, your work in relation to us, and your creation, and to understand our purpose in walking with you through Christ and by the power of your spirit, and to consider how we connect to our own culture and the purposes that you have to use us as instruments of your goodness in the world. We're just grateful, Father, for this opportunity to study these pertinent issues. We pray that you continue to bless us with your spirit give us a discipline for study, help us to manage all the different life world situations that we are facing as individual students and family members, employees or employers, just so many different hats that we wear at this time, Lord. And we ask the discipline of your spirit to prioritize those and, and to manage what is important and to put in place relatively that which is not and that includes even our course, Father, because we know life and family and work and your calling on our lives each day, that far exceeds what we're doing academically. But Father, we know you've called us into this season of study, and we thank you for it. Bless this time together this afternoon. Help us to make connections to each other that will strengthen our work in class and our fellowship in the kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, once again, mm -hmm. while I had been praying, I said that was a brief prayer. So I'm a preacher. So you got to, you got to take, you know, uh, you know, the <laughs> Bible says that with the Lord, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. So uh, it's all relative here. And we've had some other students come into our session since I have been uh, 
in prayer with us. So uh, welcome to all of you uh, that have joined us since. Let me see who we have. I see Shelby with us. Hello, Shelby. You are welcome to be with us today. I see a name or a title, Galaxy J7 Crown Royal. It and might I, be me. That, Tisha? I, what is your name? Tisha, I think that's me. Tisha, I had to use my phone. I had that's, Zoom on my phone. I couldn't get on the computer fast enough, so I just went ahead and put it in my phone real quick. <laughs> thank you for being tenacious and creative to make it to us tonight, Tisha. Thank you so very much. Is there anybody else that I'm missing? I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven students in class right now, including Shelby, who's recently arrived, and Tisha, who's arrived. I was asking um, Demetria, I'm spelling it D-E-M-E-T-R-I-A. Am I pronouncing your name properly? Yes, that's correct. Oh, all right, all right. Um, I have one of those names that if you mispronounce it, that's on you because it's such a common name, right? But there are so many unique and diverse names that I just think people need to have their due respect to get their name pronounced right. So if I don't, if I don't get it right, I want you to correct me. If it takes me four or five times, extend me God's grace, right? And if it takes me more than that, please rename yourselves to whatever I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> at least for the moment, okay? <laughs> um, so once again, thank all of you for being with us in this session. There are those that have emailed me saying, Dr. Mike, I have a very legitimate, very legitimate reason um, that I could not be here. I have to work. And you just heard me praying about how we have to prioritize things. So let me explain to all of you here in class, this is not a bait and switch on my part. I'm working to be um, open and honest with you. There's no penalty for not having attended our class. <laughs> but at the same time, I know the temptation of my flesh that if something is not required, I might come up with a very legitimate reason to me why I'm not going to do that. Right? <laughs> and so I kind of imposed a, a requirement on us to be here. And I thank you. And those that have been in touch with me have had very legitimate reasons for, for missing. And we're recording uh, for everyone's benefit, but particularly for those who had to work. We had some that are just going right into a shift of work or coming right out of one or in the middle of one. And so this recording is especially for them. Genie 100, General Education 100, that's what that stands for, Genie 100, uh, this course is called Making of the Christian Mind, and as I've shared already in the orientation videos that we've described, that, that I've provided for you, we're working, and we're, 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 we're getting the opportunity to connect with some really big thinking people. We're going all the way back into, into the ancient era of Plato and Socrates, these people who are the uh, foundation of modern philosophical thought about the existence of life and humanity, we're asking three enduring questions in this course. Number one, who is God? Number two, what is a human being? And number three, what is true, good, and beautiful? So everything we're doing in our readings in scripture, our readings of other course materials, our reflection essays, um, our dialogues in groups, our short essay papers that we're going to write, everything we're doing is weaving those three together in one way or another. And we're, we're organizing this work of answering these three questions around three topics. The first one is cherish character. We started that in week two. What we mean by cherish character is if we're starting to get an understanding of who God is and we, we uh, accept the Christian worldview that God created human beings in his nature after his likeness that we carry uh, his image then we're also able to start answering the question of, of what is a human being. And so if we're made like God and God is this way in his thoughts, 
in his actions, his behavior, his intentions and purposes, what does that imply for us? All right. So that's why we're talking about character and why our values, our beliefs, our behavior, our morals, our ethics, our whole identity is formed by who God is. So the first two or three weeks of our course here, starting with week two, we're exploring cherish character. The second uh, topic or theme is challenge culture. Basically, what we're looking at there is with the readings that we are beginning here in week two on the kingdom of God, we've got a couple of readings that we've been doing here in week two. One is uh, God's story, where we have been looking at creation and the fall and redemption and restoration. This is the story of scripture, right? We started doing some readings in Genesis. We're going to keep those up. Uh, throughout the Old Testament for the first couple of weeks. But we're starting to look uh, at God's kingdom in that he is establishing a rule within his creation, which includes at the pinnacle humanity. And so we're starting to read in Genesis, for example, about God creating the first two humans and giving them work inviting them into his creative work by making them, and these are important concepts that we're going to be working through, particularly when we finish up our little short essay that's due by tonight called, What is My Purpose? We're going to start looking at these concepts of us being regents or vice regents. That is, uh, men and women created in God's image who have been endowed with gifts, but, but um, uh, also empowered with stewardship to do what God's calling us to do within his creation. So when we talk about God's kingdom, we're actually talking about God's sovereign rule of us, not just humanity, but also the earth, right? The animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, everything that God has created that's a part of, a part of light. So uh, we're looking at that in relation to this world in which we live. How do we relate? What do we think? How do we discern what is true, what is good, what is beautiful, when we live in a culture that is so diverse by God's creation, but like we're studying so far, is, is experiencing the effects of the fall in God's continued work of redemption and restoration, that we end up in a culture that has vastly different values or beliefs or behaviors than that which we find in the Christian worldview that's revealed in scripture, right? So when we use the phrase challenge culture, we're going to be looking at how do we identify not just who we are in a, in a humanitarian perspective, a part of humanity in which there are many who do not understand, or if they do understand, they do not accept and live by the Christian worldview that we're describing from Scripture, that we understand in Scripture? How do we relate to that? How do we conduct ourselves as men and women of God who are created in His image, who are called to be his regents, we have authority from him to steward his work in the world. Um, how do we relate to those around us who are different? How do we interpret the values and the practices of our culture, particularly in light of the calling that we have as regents to be a part of his kingdom, stewards, right? Um, and then finally, the third phrase um, or topic is um, serving the world. Uh, so we have uh, cherish character, challenge culture, and serve the world. If God's still working in his efforts by his own divine power and will to, um, to redeem and restore, how do we come alongside side God? What has he called us to do in cooperation in his kingdom vision 
his kingdom work, right? So that's what this course is very much all about. So with that said for now, let me stop right at this moment and ask this question about the readings, particularly that we jumped into here in week chapter two, uh, uh, or week two rather, we've been doing some readings from Genesis. We've been doing, well, in, in week one, we had some work that we did in how to read the Bible, what the message of the Bible is and how to read and interpret the Bible. But let me ask this question. What are you gaining from our readings this week? Is this new thoughts? Are these new, new concepts or are these familiar concepts? Tell me what you're thinking about what we've been reading from scripture and also this idea about God's grand story. Somebody share with me. I feel um, what I've gotten out of it is um, uh, I didn't realize that we were um, holy because God made us holy okay. like himself in his image, in his likeness, and um, also that, um, uh, that he breathed his breath, the breath of life in us, which um, is the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, all right. Valuable thoughts, just great insights there that we're gaining from these first few chapters in Genesis, right? And then also some of the course materials that have been outlined for us. Thank you so much there, Kristen. Yes, this idea that God created human beings uniquely in his image or after his likeness, that he breathed into the nostrils of the man that he created from the dust of the earth. Adam, right, uh, and, and gave, gave him life. And then from the man, because there was this acknowledgement on the Godhead's part, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, that their work of creation in humanity was incomplete. There was something lacking. And I've often wondered, was that, was that an accident on God's part? Did he forget, oh, wait a minute, I didn't make the man complete? No, I wonder if in fact what God was doing was helping Adam, helping the man understand that he was not complete. Because if you notice, he gave him the work of naming all the animals. And it's very likely that Adam started noticing there was a male and there was a female of every species, right? And even in the plant kingdom, there's male and there's, there's female. And then he began seeing about himself, there's a male, <laughs> but there's no female, right? And I wonder if it's at that point in the narrative of Genesis, Moses records God's timing in meeting the need that Adam now sees that he possesses. And he puts him into a deep sleep first Bible record of anesthesi anesthesiology, puts him into a deep sleep, and he creates from him the woman, the one who is like him, but very much not like him, and they complement, and both of them possess uniquely in God's creation this God part, this nature, right, that is eternal, that is spirit in nature. So, Kristen, at one level, we have the Spirit of God brooding over the waters, hovering over the waters of creation, and we hear the voice of God saying, separate land from water, let there be light, these kinds of things, right? So we've got the Spirit working in that way. And then at another level, we have the Spirit of humanity as God breathes life into the first two human, well, the first human being, and then the second one. And then we have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, as part of all of this grand work. It's just a very fascinating, fascinating narrative that we're reading. I'm glad, yeah. you, drew, I'm glad you drew that out. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else, any other thoughts about what we're reading so far this week? I think that um, it just goes to show how powerful words are. Yes. God's word created just his word. The, the authority of his word is he what spoke. created everything. He spoke it into existence. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so with that being said, you know, 
uh, like in the New Testament, it speaks of, you know, that all scripture was given by inspiration of God. The word inspiration there in the translation meaning breath. He breathed God it. God breathed, breath and, of God, right. Yes. Yeah. And so it's very important to understand how important it is to follow God's word and how much authority it holds. Very much- good. Amen. Very, very good. Any other can thoughts? I- yes. Yes. Can I- Yes. So I wanted to say that it's so important for us to go back to the beginning, um, how we've been reading Genesis, because a lot of times we're living in this world and this culture that a lot of people don't know who they are. So finding our identity, not on the world and what the world has to offer, but more so in God. So when somebody's a little confused, they can always go back to Genesis and say, okay, so God created men, Adam, and created a, a woman, like a man and a woman. Because many of us are, you know, many people are confused nowadays. So I think it's such a beautiful thing. And to know our identity, our authority, and the power of the tongue as well. Oh, yes. Okay. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you so much, Maisie. I think you make such an important point. You know, when Jesus was challenged by religious leaders trying to uh, corner him on the subject of marriage and divorce and remarriage. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 19, Mark chapter 10. They started citing various rabbis and rabbinical schools of thought about what would be uh, a legitimate reason for a divorce under the law of Moses. And if you Mm -hmm. notice what Jesus did, Jesus didn't start with just or stop with the opinions of certain rabbis of their day. He went all the way back and he said, in the beginning, Mm -hmm. God created, you remember, uh, he created the man and the woman. And then he starts from there with his vision of his his redeclaration of God's vision, the Trinity's vision for marriage. He created the male and female. So you make such a great point, Meiji, about the fact that if we need if we need clarification on who we are and why we're here, we go back to Genesis. That's its meaning, beginnings, the origins, right? Yeah. Very good. Well, what we're going to start seeing as we tease this out, many of you probably already have done these readings and you've started your work on your uh, short essay, uh, My Purpose. We're going to start seeing God's grand story unfold. Because we have this harmonious, almost paradise-like experience prior to sin in Genesis 1, 2, and early 3. But then we have this acting out of the first two human beings of their own prerogative or will, which, by the way, God intentionally created in us for, among other reasons, so that we could be like them in that the Trinity has a will They act intentionally, right? But also that we could be making intentional choices to be in this relationship with Father God, right? But then with the decision they made to do other than God's will concerning the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, everything changed. Humanity changed. The earth changed. And from that point forward, the effects of those decisions have now diminished, deteriorated, and corrupted humanity. We've been separated from God because of sin. Uh, We have a harder experience in the world physically uh, because of sin. We have more conflict in relationships. Our flesh is more strong Uh, because of sin. And so we have this grand story of God continuing to be told in the early uh, stages of Genesis, where God immediately goes to work in restoring or redeeming humanity. In fact, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, is described in biblical scholar Hebrew terms and and, and, uh, eternal purpose big picture terms, as the Proto-Evangelion, the Proto-Evangelion. Once again, you don't have to know that for any quiz or exam, and you don't even need to know that word to go to heaven. (laughs) But what the word means is the beginning of the gospel. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where God pronounces a curse, the outcome of, of disobedience. He, produ- he pronounces this one upon the serpent. And he speaks openly about the serpent being limited by one that will ultimately come from the woman. And as you begin to trace these genealogies in scripture, in fact, Luke's genealogy starts with Mary and Joseph and goes all the way back to Adam. You start to see projected on down this lineage, Abraham, from Abraham, Isaac, from Isaac, Jacob, from Jacob, 12 sons, 12 tribes, from which the nation of Israel is born, one from whom would come that would bless the entire earth, which is the covenant promise that God made to Abram, Abraham. And ultimately, we know that through the prophets and Jesus' own testimony about himself, God incarnate, according to John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. Um, He made everything that there is and nothing was made without him. Verse 14, the word became flesh. Dwelt among us. And dwelled among us. It's literally pitched his tent. He tabernacled. God moved into the neighborhood. And he's here for the purpose of redeeming humanity from their fallenness, from our sin. So we see this beautiful story, God's story, starting to be woven from the early chapters of Genesis. There's creation, there's the fall, there's redemption through the work of Christ, and ultimately there's renewal. God is renewing all things. He's bringing us back to him through the work of Christ as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He's filling us with his spirit who, among other things, reforms Christ in us, rebuilds this spiritual nature that we have that came from God, right? That God part that's been corrupted, right? So we have this beautiful grand story beginning to be told in Scripture. And I'm really grateful that this is a part of what we're doing right here at the early early phases of our course. And this is where we start to see this concept of God's kingdom, his intention to build a family of humanity created in his image, made in his image, right? Who who he helps catch the vision for what he's doing with humanity and ultimately wants what he wants to do with humanity is to be in relationship to us. He wants to be our God. He wants to be our father. He wants us to be his sons and daughters, right? So ultimately, God's God's seeking fellowship. And that's an exciting, that's an exciting reality to consider about the nature of God, right? That he seeks fellowship with those that are like him, but are not like him, and that he is drawing back to himself through the work through the work of Christ. And not only does he seek fellowship, he seeks partnership. He wants us to come alongside him to help the rest of humanity catch this understanding, to be reformed, to understand the effects of the fall and our disobedience, but to understand God's great love to redeem us through his one and only son, God incarnate, the perfect sacrifice for sins, right? And that this reunion of fellowship between us and God can occur until ultimately when he has brought about the renewal of all things, we are back in this place of eternal fellowship with God, following this mortality that we experience, following this time here of life on earth. So that's the grand story that we're kind of weaving together and we're going to pull certain threads on from time to time throughout our course and discuss in a bit more detail. So let me ask you, do you have any questions or or thoughts or anything you would like filled in if we can do so right at this point 
on where these early phases of the course are going, particularly in this idea of cherishing character. Anything you want to ask? Well, not really ask, but can you guys hear me? Sure. Sh Shelby, go ahead. Um, talking about flourishing. Yes. Um, you know, um, I know that time to what we were you know talking about but um we didn't touch base mainly on it um but it does tie in you know like paying it forward um you know being as a group together being as one and working towards you know um just being more like him in character flourishing you know if somebody needs a dollar for something you're in line you know um it starts as small as that yeah and um you know that's what ultimately what it Wanted. So, you know, it just paying it forward, being kind, you know, it always goes a long way because you never know somebody that's really upset or hurting is probably when they need the most love anyway. So. Oh, yes. Yes. Such such good observation, Shelby. And this idea of human flourishing has everything to do with us being able to respond to those around us the way you're describing caring for one another, serving one another, celebrating one another, this great diverse human family experience that we have because we have our identity in God through Christ and by the power and leading of his spirit. We know who we are and we can fulfill our, our, our purpose in life because we know who God is and the one who designed us, the one who made us, is the one who knows best how we thrive, best how we function, right? So when we are living in relationship to him in his kingdom purposes for us, and we are living that out in relationship to each other, we thrive, we flourish, right? And we can't do so if we don't know who we are, and we really don't know who we are if we don't mm -hmm. know who God is. Right. right, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. So yeah. literally, if we're going to claim that, then, you know, and it it, it goes, I put this in one of my other classes, you know, it, it's a cliche, I guess we hear all the time, but it's so powerful. What would Jesus do? Yeah. It, it, I mean, with that, just that, that simplicity of that thought in everything that we do, every emotion, every situation, I mean, that then we can carry uh, proudly, you know, the title of a Christian. That's right. So it, it's, yeah, it just, it all, right. it, it went back on that. And with, you know, state trying to divide us because, you know, God made us all perfect and, you know, together. I mean, we, you know, uh, our, the color of our skin, our culture should be mixed in with, you know, and we should be accepting and embracing that, not trying to divide or, you know, separate. Coming together is better, yeah. you know, in, in good ways. When we're thriving with the purpose that God has created us and in uh, response to the relationship he's calling us into, we're in a position to then help others thrive and flourish by the way we serve them and support them and value them, respect them, care for them, right? Very, very good observations. Thank you all so so very much for uh for the way I do have one question dr mike sure i have tried to find an mla how to um cite my do my citation with the strongest concordance okay and and getting it from a website not through an actual book is there a special place i mean i tried every <laughs> finding every way there are going to be some tools that you have under it's called course tools uh, in our green band of uh, course uh, links on the left side. If you click on course tools, you'll go eventually to a place where you'll find uh, formatting styles that are uh, accepted within the Regent University uh, academic uh, course community. If you have trouble finding that, let me know. Now, what I do want to say is that this course is a foundational course for us at Regent. So we're not requiring any particular formatting style and you're not gonna be graded on formatting styles when you write your short reflection essay on what is my purpose or our other papers that we're gonna write. 
we simply ask that if you choose a style, work to be consistent with its rules. So I, I want to say to you that if, in fact, you have difficulty getting that formatted just the way you want, don't worry about that because that's not something that we're going to be focused in such, okay. <laughs> such deep detail about right now. That okay. will come in later courses. There'll be other courses that you'll have instructors saying, now I want this particular formatting style and this is how you do it. Here's a tool or a guide that shows you. You should be able to find that though over in your course tools. If you can't, you let me know, okay? Okay, okay, right. thank you. Very good question. Thank you for asking and I appreciate that conscientiousness. Anything else anybody wanted to ask about at this point? I want to transition to talk about two things. One is, um, three things actually. One is our short essay due tonight. Two, what's coming in week three. And then finally, I wanna take just a moment to talk about those um, uh, right career management assignments that are coming starting in week five. So any other questions or, or comments at this point? I didn't mean to cut you off by saying, here's where I wanna go. <laughs> Sometimes that can shut things down real quickly. If you have a question, you raise your hand, you let me know, okay? Let's talk about our uh, short, uh, what is my purpose essay that we're writing due by tonight. And let me also say, when I say due by tonight, if you'll go back and look at the assignment deadline requirements, you'll see on short writing essays like this or papers, we actually have an extension all the way out till Wednesday. Now, I don't want you to feel like, oh, I got clear till Wednesday. Finish it tonight, if at all possible, if you've not already finished it, if it's a work in progress, but there's no deductions for you if that's submitted as late as this coming Wednesday. What I do um, uh, appreciate, and it helps me understand where you are in the process, that if you know you're going to miss the Sunday deadline on, on an assignment, shoot me a little note. Just let me know. Hey, Dr. Mike, I'm working on it, but this came up for me, but I wanted you to know I'm going to have it to you before, you know, whatever. But tonight, we're just looking at tying what we've read this week about God's kingdom and us being made vice regents or stewards, right, in his kingdom, that that means that we've been given a purpose. Now, our general purpose, obviously, is to glorify God and to be in relationship with him, right? Um, but this little short essay is intended to help us fine tune that a little bit. So take as an example, some calling or identity that you have in your life. Maybe you're a spouse, a parent, an employee, certainly you're a student. Talk in your short essay about how you see your purpose as one of God's vice regents or stewards in that area of your life, okay? And you can speak in the first person because it's a reflective essay. You're talking about yourself and work to just reference what we've read in some way. For example, when you have been reading in these uh, uh, short documents that we have, course materials about these definitions of what the kingdom of God is, if you want to just cite that in a line or so, just say, in our readings this week, we understood kingdom of God to mean, and here's what this means when it comes to my purpose. Or in Genesis chapters 1 through 3, we read, God created us in his image, he wants to be in relationship. And this is what it means to me in my purpose. You see what I'm saying? Just make those connections, okay? Any other questions or anything you'd like to talk about concerning that, that assignment, the what is my purpose reflection? Because we've got this great opportunity as vice regents, as priests in God's garden. Okay, any other comments? I'm just excited. Good. I'm, 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 I'm just excited. I don't know if you could hear me. This is my first Zoom meeting ever. Well, you're doing well, Shelby. <laughs> so you're welcome to Zoom. Thank you. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm 
worry about I what want, I look like on here, and I'm trying I want to, to tell you, this is very distracting. You that are excited like Shelby about being in a Zoom meeting, you inspire those of us who have been Zoom, <laughs> Zoom meeting out. <laughs> I'm excited. I know. Right? To stay it's been helpful. It is so helpful to have to actually you know, see oh. a face and talk. <laughs> I'm so glad. Really I'm so is, old school. I, you know, we don't I'm so glad. Let me, move, <laughs> let me move to week three, which is what we're about to go into. And I'm moving on my screen to our course content. This is week three. We are still looking at the theme of cherished character. But week three coming up, we have a, we're moving from the Old Testament. We're going to be tracing God's kingdom in our readings through uh, God's work through Moses, Abraham, Moses, the kingdom of God through Israel. We're going to be reading through that, but we're ultimately going to be tying to God's work in the world of, of redeeming us through the coming of Christ, the incarnate son of God. So we're going to be reading in John chapters one through three in week three coming up. And we're going to do our first discussion board assignment. Now, our discussion boards involve our groups. We have three groups that have been established. Hopefully, you've gone in and you found yourself in whatever group you're in. There's been nothing else to do there yet. I will send out some details about how to post your discussion this week in your group area. And if you were to look and you don't find that when you click on groups, you can go there, you be sure to email me because that what that tells me is sometimes we've had some late entries to our course and I wasn't aware. So I need to place you in a group. Uh, has everybody found themselves in a group or have you looked so far to see, you know where you are? Yeah, it's one of our three groups. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But here's what we're going to be doing. After we read John chapters 1 through 3, we're going to be looking at Jesus as the Word. It's really interesting to see Genesis 1-1, right? Um, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or Genesis 1-1. Then to go to John 1-1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we see the role of the Word in creation, right? So what we're going to do in this particular assignment is to discuss, we're going to identify three roles that we see for Jesus, who is the word, and why this is important in God's eternal purposes. The details of that are found in the discussion prompt in week three. We're just now finishing week two, so I don't expect you to already be at week three. I just want to uh, uh, forecast where this is going. And I'll put this out in my video that I send out tomorrow to the whole class. So that's an assignment coming up for week three. Finally, let's just talk very briefly about these right career managements. There's five assignments coming up starting in week five, one in week five, one in week six, one in week seven, and two in week eight. And I posted a specific um, video that describe what these are for. Have you been able to see that? It will be in your week one uh, email announcements if you've not seen it. This is a tremendous tool and resource that is a part of this course provided to you by Regent University. It is a combination personality wiring and giftedness uh, assessment along with career path uh, identifications of that which God has gifted me with or equipped me with to consider a vocation or a path. Many times students, excuse me, have come into our programs already in a chosen field or with a degree that's going to launch them further into that field or to another field of vocation. But what these tools help us do is to assess, okay, this might be what we're interested in, or we might think this is, this is a good career path for a future income or building a life, but is that how God's wired me? You know, is my temperament that he gave me suited for this particular uh, vocation? And what else can I learn about myself when it comes to choosing 
or continuing my, my calling or my vocation. We don't need to do any more about that today just to be, than just to be aware that this is a big assignment that's coming on a weekly basis starting in week five. And I just want to keep it in front of us because beginning in week four, you're going to start getting an email from uh, the dean's office that will give you access to this site that's contracted by the university, Right Career Management. And once you get that email, it will give you the username that you can set up and a password that you use to go into this area and start doing these assignments at your pace. You don't have to do them once a week. You could do them all at once and knock them out, or you can do them at a pace that fits your schedule, but they all have to be completed by the Wednesday of week chapter or, or, or week eight, the Wednesday of week eight for them to have full credit. Here's that, how that's gonna work. It's worth 100 points. Each of the five that you complete, you get 20 points for a total of 100. So once you just spend the time completing these assessments, it's an easy A and it's worth 24% of your total grade. So anytime you can get almost a quarter of your total grade done just by doing it, uh, you know, that's a good thing. That's a good motivation. <laughs> and I'll just keep that in front of you as we move up toward week five and you get that email from the dean's office in week four. Any other questions or thoughts about this? I've gone past, I, I, I lied to you. I said 545, but I'm at 549 uh, in, in the Eastern time zone. Anything else you want to ask about? Anything else you want to comment on before we wrap up? Richard, um, I go ahead. Yes, Meiji, go I'm ahead. So yes, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to you and taking time to taking your time to meet with us and explain everything to us. And your videos are very helpful as well. Oh, I'm it's, glad. It's, it's I'm... difficult. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. It's difficult to do online learning, but when you have, you know, more of that connection through videos and even this really helps. So I just wanted to thank you. That's what Absolutely. it's for. Absolutely. That's why we do it. I'm glad to get that feedback. I had three different doctoral professors who provided a weekly video that set the week, reviewed last week and projected the new week. That was amazing to me in that work. And, and I just thought, I'm going to keep that up myself. So yeah. uh, I'm glad we're doing that. Thank you for saying so, Meiji. <laughs> I see Demetria and yeah. Kristen and That's Brittany. a cute name too. Huh? Thank you. That is. <laughs> it is cute. <Thank> you. <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry. They were complimenting my name. Well, I meant oh, it is a beautiful name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It <Thank> is. <laughs> I see Brittany and Joseph and Richard and Kristen. Your video is muted uh, as we have audio. Any questions or any comments? Anything you need? Well, I was muted I, for a second. I, oh. Sorry. Had to, I'm sorry. I had to go do something. I didn't want to be walking around like this on the phone. That's so. okay. Thank <laughs> you. I figured it would be polite to just mute my, uh, well, to turn my camera off. But <laughs> I was trying to eight, figure eight, that out too. I was like, I feel like I have to see. Yeah. You know. So let me be polite and turn my camera off. But I did want to reiterate that I, I love the videos. They're okay. very, and just to have that connection makes you feel like you're connected, so to speak. And yeah, I, I absolutely, I love it. Our, church, yeah. our so church that I pastor is distanced in worship right now and we're live streaming and um, it's a recording of a live stream. And so I produce all of that from that same spot that you see me every week. So this seat where I am right now, I just turn it the opposite direction and there's my camera and my lights and, and I'm good to go. So this has become a, a special corner in, in our family room, my office here. So I'm glad that's helpful to you. Yeah. Thanks, God. Well, anything else? I thought maybe Kristen, did you have a thought? Or yeah, I, I had something that I wanted to say. I, I feel uh, such a presence of, of God in you that when you talk and I watch your videos, I can feel it like on, on my end, you know, and it's just amazing. It makes me feel very comforted and, uh, and very um, 
at peace and like, oh, I'm so excited to go forward with this. And and it makes me think that uh, that I'm going the right direction, you know? Thank you for those kind words. And I yeah. won't just attribute any of that to, to God's spirit because that's that's him working. But that's what they're intended to do. I just want, to, particularly in an online platform, we don't get the interaction. And I just want to provide as much of it as possible. And I'm nearby. You'll find me pretty accessible. I try to get back to you by email as quickly as I can. Weekends can get a little busy, so it's a little lagging there sometimes. But I'm so grateful to hear that that's helpful to you, Kristen. Thank you so very much for saying so. Welcome. And I can't wait again. So <laughs> say again, Shelby. I can't wait to do this. <laughs> Good. I Good. can't wait to do this. Again. Yeah, I wish this was like a weekly thing, like with all of yeah. this. I was yeah. thinking that. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we'll come back later in the course about week five or six and see where we stand. But uh, yeah, okay. we've been right along pretty quickly. Well, folks, you've been very generous with your time as well. And I thank you for that. And with that, I'm going to say, God bless. I'm nearby if needed. And I look forward to our work in week three. Okay. The nice recording, to meet you, everybody. If you want to see the recording, yeah, I will nice post the link later this yeah. evening so that you can look back if you want and it'll be available for all those that couldn't make it. They, they miss being with us, but they had some good reasons for not being here. Thank all of you for being here. All right. Have a good night, Dr. Thank Mike. You. Thank you. God good bless night. you guys. Bye. 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 God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.